Hey everyone, welcome to a special video here at Nintendo Prime. We have a little discussion video for the weekend. Uh, as you can already see on your screen, it's featuring Mr. RGT85. What's Sean himself. On, people? How's everyone doing? Hope everyone's having a good weekend, if that's when you're watching it, or whenever you're watching this video. Hope you're having a nice day. I mean, probably having a nicer day than Knicks fans have every single Oof. day. Oof. It's, we got we got we got to bring some changes to the table. I'm, yeah, got, uh, got some, I, I I I feel bad throwing shade because like it's been fifty years since we won a title. So like now that we've got one, you know. No, I mean you you've got a, a well built team. None of that. I want to go play with my friends nonsense, mm -hmm. which I I hate teams like that. Like your no. your Lakers and stuff like that. It's a well built team. You know, lucked into Giannis. Giannis yeah. is the key to everything because he's a not a I don't. He stayed and said, screw it. I don't want to leave and play with other people. So, well, I mean, even Middleton, like Middleton was a G League. It was a G League player. And then he, you know, he got bumped up to an NBA team. So, no, I, I, I respect the Bucs. I, I like watching them, just not when they play the Knicks. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Well, I didn't have to see you in the playoffs last year because you guys couldn't. Well, we won't go through that again. All right, guys. Well, we're here today to talk about the Game Awards because obviously, if you guys could, I know we have several people that watch both of our channels. Um, we are on kind of opposite sides of how we feel about the game awards um this year and probably just in a, a more general sense because i feel like i don't know about you but I, a lot of times i see like kind of the same reactions to the game awards every single year people just don't like it it is what it is they don't like the way it's set up sometimes there's a couple announcements they care about like oh it was cool you know like Z nintendo fans are probably all happy when breath of the wild was shown back in 2016 and 2014 and then when it won game of the year in 2017 i'm sure they were all happy then Nintendo fans, they were happy with Sephiroth last year, but then they probably hated the rest of the Game Awards. Um, Xbox fans were probably happy back when the Series X was announced with Hellblade, and then it's kind of sort of one of those things where I think a lot of the reactions to the Game Awards come down to did they give me what I wanted? And if they didn't, then the strangeness of a lot of the other stuff happening really stands out. Um, so on my end of things, I, I, I think it starts with how I approach the Game Awards. Um, one, I approach it as a Jeff Keighley event because those are always different than everything else in the industry, <laughs> for better or for worse. Um, because he very much likes his music. I could do without Sting. I could definitely... <laughs> even though, yeah, like I, I was a pseudo Sting fan. I don't think I've ever heard a Sting song in my life that was intentionally listened to. The police were good. I like the police, which he sure. was the lead singer of, you know, Message in a Bottle, Walking on the Moon, Roxanne. Those are good songs, but that's not what he was playing. Yeah. His solo no. stuff. I think it gets too weird. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I grew up, I was a 90s pop boy. So, like Backstreet Boys, even like PLC. <laughs> I know you, were you really? <laughs> yeah. Totally. Totally. And then, like, even today now, like, seriously, I was just listening to like Jason Derulo earlier, and I'm like, how old am I right now? Like I don't know, I don't know who that is, but it, I'll assume it's yeah. yeah see, that's what I'm saying. You don't know who he, it's again. It's still pop music, but now it's like you know, I'll I'll change it up. Basically, if you ever go to a club or a GT, I don't know if you've been to one. It's kind of like the music they play there. Well, you see, I mean, there's there's variants of clubs. I like well, to go that's true. to this, I, I, like the the fancy clubs. I, no, I won't be there. <laughs> I'll be at the CD clubs. I you know I like I like you know little little different sort of atmosphere. A little different atmosphere. A little different. Atmosphere. Yeah. Let me guess. Are you, are you going to like one of those uh, country hoedown clubs? No, no, none of those. <laughs> none of those. I did. I have. Um, I do know that Copperhead Road is a very popular song with the with the white women who are a bit southern. Because I used to live in the south, and um, me and my buddy used to DJ. Yeah, that's, that's so a like, popular one. Yeah, we would do like weddings and stuff, and like most of the weddings were cool, but some of them were like real dirty South weddings, and it was like Skinnered and like that and stuff. I mean, those those were the easy events though, because you literally just hit play, like you're not trying to mix anything or anything, mm -hmm. or like you know trying to get people riled up. You're just letting people dance. But yeah, no, no I, 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 not my cup of tea. <laughs> That's all right. So obviously, you know, we get our music performances that and uh, Imagine Dragons and all that, and. Honestly, I, I personally don't care about that. I do like the orchestra. I think the orchestra is obviously more fitting um, because orchestrated music is actually part of like most video games, most AAA games these days. Um, but, you know, I know I watched your video. You could give or take on orchestrated music. Not really your thing, but it's not like you were saying, oh, just don't have it. Just, hey, I just don't really care. 
Um, so I guess for me with the Game Awards, my whole approach to why I think it's actually fairly decent is um, unlike all the other events of the year, because I feel like all of us as gamers already sort of have the events we want, like Nintendo fans, we have directs throughout the year. Um, you know, Sony fans have State of Play, um, you know, and so on for Xbox as well. Uh, PC really only has like, I guess, the PC gaming show at E3. I don't it, you know, whatever. I mean, every game from Xbox goes to PlayStation so, or to PC, so PlayStation games come over as well. So I guess you could say that's arguably PC related as well. Um, but we have all these different events. We have obviously E3 as well, which, which is really just taking those individual events and just slamming them really close together. <laughs> other events, PlayStation experience. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of these things. We all know about it. But there's also other award shows. We have like the BAFTA awards. We have the Game Developers Conference awards. Um, and there's one other I can't remember, but and all three of those that I can think of are streamed Dice. online. Yeah, Dice yeah. awards, Dice awards, yeah. Dice awards. Yes, and most of these awards, not every year, but a lot of years, are are streamed online, and basically do not get covered by anybody. Right. Um, IGN I think puts up one post about who won, but um, yeah, there's you know us, we're not out there live streaming on Twitch and YouTube and trying to you know react to things and even talking about them unless. It's a particular favorite game of ours that happens to win a major award. We probably don't even bring it up. Right. But at the Game Awards, we do bring it up. And it's interesting because I think, I, I believe you're on record that you just don't care about the awards themselves. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's not that. I mean, for me personally, like, it, because of who is on the panel, you know, some of these people... I don't think should be on the panel. I don't think Newsweek. I don't think Entertainment Weekly yeah. should be on the panel for this. So because of that, I feel like it sort of dilutes, you know, the the value of the awards. Now, I could understand just that that's just me outside looking in. Personally, yeah. it does nothing for me. However, yeah. a, a game developer, a, you know, a, a sound technician, um, you know, a Q&A tester, if, if they win something, I could definitely understand why that's important to them because those people don't get seen. Those people don't get heard. Nobody knows who those people are. They're mm -hmm. essentially the faceless people behind the games themselves. And to be a, a, a game award show and going back to the orchestrated music, we had literally five minutes of orchestrated music for all of the game of the year nominees. And then for the game of the year winner, we had 50 seconds of speech time. Yeah. That to me is completely out of whack. Yeah. Um, that, that part I, I do agree with in general. I think there was a pacing issue. Um, and I don't know. It, it's weird because it's, it's live stream. So I'm not really sure why they have to stick to a strict schedule and couldn't have just gave him like five minutes to talk. Um, but I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. There's obviously some sort of strict schedule time limit they have to stick to. I don't know how, what, what it has to do with or what penalties they are if they go over time. Because obviously, Ferris was well aware of the time limit. Because he went up there and literally brought up the fact that he, hey, we're at like, the time limit. So, you know. like, Well, even, even another person that was up there talking, after like 40 seconds, they made a quip that they were saying for them to wrap it up. And it's like, fuck. Oh, I, I'm, I'm not going to cuss. Um, it, it's like. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We swear on my channel. It's wrong. Okay. I, I try not to say the F word on my channel. That's the only one I know. So, but it's like F you, you know, you don't tell me to wrap it up. This is, this is my moment. Who are you? And things like that bother me. I actually, yep. I don't know if you saw this today, but um, Jeff Keighley was doing a Twitter spaces and um, I have no idea what Twitter spaces was. Yeah. I, I've never used it before. Like it would yeah. like would hit me up and he was like, dude, you, you won't join this. And I was like, well, you have to explain what it is first. <laughs> and so he told me it was like, well, basically, you know, people go in there and discuss things. It's, like, like, it's like a discord. Yeah. Voice and so I was like, I'll go in there. And so there was like a bunch of people in there and he was like, okay, now you got to request to be on there. And I was like, yeah. sure. I'll tell Jeff exactly what I always say. Yeah. And so I, I called in and he actually took my call and we talked nice. for like, uh, probably a good five, 10 minutes about my grievances about the show. And, um, you know, it, it was his home turf, you know, so I'm sure. not going to, you know, be quite as as vulgar and crude as I would be if it was on my channel, or my home turf. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, I, be just respectful. Told him, yeah. I just told him what my quips were, what my problems were. I don't need Hollywood infiltrating the game awards when the video game industry is bigger than Hollywood. And these are the people that. And the music industry and the movie industry, every aspect of Hollywood is not as big as the video game industry. That's that's the king of the mountain right now as far as revenue is Facts. concerned. I don't like the fact that the show was 
I mean, if you're including the pre-show, which they had announcements in, they had trailers in, and they even gave away awards in it. I don't like the fact that the show was almost four hours long. There's no, there's no need for that. And I understand. I told them I understand the business aspect of it. That you know how how the ads work and how you know companies submit their trailers and they want to be featured on the show, so on and so forth. He explained, you know, there's tons of trailers that got cut, but I think when you look at this game awards the main thing i took away from this was sony microsoft and nintendo pretty much no showed it sony showed another horizon trailer okay we, we've seen that game we, we know that what that game is bringing to the table microsoft showed a hellblade 2 which was announced at the game awards so it's like well that shouldn't be a huge surprise and still it was mostly an in-game cut scene or an in-game engine doing a cut scene more so than what you'll actually be playing and nintendo didn't show up at all you had doug bowser go up there and give a speech that was literally like a marketing campaign yeah, for metroid well, dread like this uh, is a great action adventure game yeah. doug, doug right. bowser, <laughs> have you have you heard him publicly speak before like even when he's not on camera He's very it's like he's yeah. very timid. He, yeah, he's very timid. He's not a very good public speaker. And that's another thing is like I told Jeff, I was like, look, you know, I get that some people get up on stage and they probably shit their pants because they, they're not in front of a camera all the oh, time. Dude, that, not, that, that one guy for GTFO. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he, and, he I was mean, so I, nervous. And, I, and I get that. But it's like I feel there needs to be a better balance between the awards themselves and and the 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 show you know the the entertainment aspect of it because i i don't need sting i don't need imagine dragons i don't need hollywood people doing a and i i i forget the gentleman's name because i don't follow modern films with a guy with this phone he was like oh sorry i'm watching halo on twitch i told i told jeff i was like that sucked that bit sucked man like yeah. and he was like oh he came up with it himself and i was like yeah but that's cool but that that bit was longer than the people that got up there to talk could talk for and you know things like fighting game of the year how are you just the fighting game genre is massive it's absolutely massive why are we just skipping past these things i think jeff is a decent person i always say that in every video where i criticize the game awards or talk about the game awards or just talk about jeff himself i always say i feel he's a decent person i understand that there's a balance because he asked me he was like well how would you do the show what would you do and i was like dude i mean that's a huge undertaking you know yeah. i would come up with some ideas but i i understand what you're saying with that but at the same time it's like if you shortened it up you got rid of most of the Hollywood stuff. You can still have a little things here if it's tied into gaming in a realistic way. Like Keanu Reeves, okay, he's an OG. He he gets a pass. Like that that's fine. <laughs> Plus you they have, have like that Matrix demo thing, and I, I don't think that should have been the final announcement, even because we already that's knew about thing. it. That should have been earlier in the show. But that, that's another thing. That was the big bombshell. Was that now? Granted, have you played that? Yeah. It's yeah. pretty it, intense. It, it, Granted, it's, after 30 minutes, you're like, all right, I'm done with this. But yeah, for those yeah, first but, but, 30 minutes, you're like, it's okay. an, it, it's really good. I don't actually okay. think it even showed that well there, to be no. honest. It's when you put it on your well, system. 20, yeah, it's, it's like, okay. It. Okay. Like, I don't know why they didn't do a better gameplay cut for this, because this is actually really cool. And then, yeah, you're, and then you're just, oh, I'm ready to move yeah. on now. The, the first few times you crash your cars after that, it's like, okay, I'm good. Yep. But yeah, I mean, the, my whole thing about the Game Awards is it's not the worst thing on the earth. But Jeff himself, I know you were comparing it to other game show awards, but Jeff himself always says he doesn't want it to be like those. He essentially, on the Spaces call, somebody asked him, you know, how he positioned this, how he sort of viewed it. And he essentially said that he sort of viewed it as a winter E3 as far as things like, announcements and you know things of that nature and i feel like the quality of the announcements was definitely lacking especially compared to years past no matter what platform you had no matter what what you know system you championed for it was just like there was a lot of fluff there was a lot of filler and it it honestly felt like a waste of time to some degree because you could have skipped that show and you wouldn't have missed anything. There was no real grab you, gotcha moment. It needed one big moment, and that moment never came. It could have been from any developer, you know, any sort of exclusive thing. But, I mean, what was the takeaway from that show? Sonic Frontiers? It was CGI, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't actual gameplay. Granted, we did learn more about it. And but we learned more I, I after think, the show, too, of course. 
Yeah, I, I mean, that's just my feeling. It's not it's not the worst thing in the world. It's fun. Je- Jeff Keeley is like is a lot like the New York Knicks. You know, you think of basketball, you think of the Knicks probably because they're one of the most <laughs> talked about franchises because at one time they were a prominent franchise. You think of McDonald's, you know, oh, it's fun to poke fun at McDonald's. They're the big, you know, dog in the world. But I do like that he is open to talking to idiots like me because I think if I was in his position, I would be like, yeah, get, get out of here, get out of here, little man. I, I don't have time for you. But I mean, I definitely respect that aspect of it, but I just think that the show could be a lot better. That's fair. I mean, I, I always thought I, I've had the same criticisms of the show every single year. The only thing they did technically do better this year I don't really like to give credit for it, but it is one of my main complaints was, okay, they're going to rush through some categories. I don't like that they do that. But at least this year, they actually showed all the nominees before announcing the winners. In years past, they would just announce the winners and not who the nominees were. It's only a smidge better, by the way, Jeff Keighley. It's not uh, exactly what we wanted, but at least we got to see them on screen. Like, here's the nominees. Okay, and then here's the winner. It's like, well, okay. It's a little bit better. Yeah, but there was like two what? segments that happened within like a 30 minute time frame where it was like yeah. you got five winners yes. and then you got five more winners. And yep. I was like, oh, I remember sitting here uh, with my with my co-host and I was like, so uh, according to Jeff Keighley's time, we only got like 10 minutes left and there's still like seven awards that haven't been announced. So Ugh. what's happening? All of a sudden, here's Jeff Keighley rapid fire, like five awards in two minutes. And I'm like, OK, well, that kind of sucks. I also um, one thing I, I did tell him because. Um, I had a email exchange with him uh, after the show uh, because I was talking to their co-streaming person about mm-hmm. my show getting blocked by <laughs> WB or whatever. Everyone's got blocked by WB. Yeah, and he was like really, really overwhelmed and somehow accidentally tagged Keely in it. He did it, and so then I said, "Oh, hey, Keely, how's it going, man? Um, here's some notes for you." And he actually responded. And uh, I mean, credit to you, you got to give, especially me, anyone, the time of day. Um, and he was super nice in that email response. Um, and my big thing was the show. I feel when I, when I say it's good, I say it's good because Jeff Keighley has this vision of it's an E3 event that also celebrates and recognizes developers and tries to make this different than E3. Um, which by the way, um, I don't know about you, I, I, did, I did a big live stream event for all of E3, so like 12 hour days, four days in a row. E3 was a shit show this year. I think everyone can mostly agree with that besides Microsoft and Nintendo did all right, but everyone else just I could have did with pretty much with nobody else. Um, Summer Game Wait, Fest uh, helped a little bit because like, we still had Devolver Digital, but they were part of Summer Game Fest and stuff. Well, I um, think Sony not being at E3 but, definitely hurt. Well, that, that's hurt. That's really hurt over the years. You know, when you, when you have one of the big three not there, and it's one of the big three that happens to have a lot of exclusives, yeah, that, that sucks. Um, but I sat there and I'm like, you know what? Um, I, I, I just recounted again just to make sure. There were 43 games talked about at the Game Awards. Um, of, those, of those games, uh, it was uh, 18 of them were games that we had either never seen before or had never seen gameplay before and saw first gameplay. Um, the rest of them were either like Horizon or, you know, Elden Ring, stuff like that. Uh, and then, obviously, a bunch of CGI trailers that don't really tell us much, just like the Wonder Woman. Okay, the game exists. Hey, I hate those. I absolutely Reminds me of Metro. Those. Okay, Metro Prime 4, it exists. Cool. I hate those so much. They but I also nuts. look at it, I don't blame the Game Awards for those. Now, you could argue those should be the ones cut, but also, I don't know what ones got cut in comparison. Like, you know, he's trying to put the biggest ones in there, um, and maybe the ones that got cut weren't a bigger deal. I have no idea. What I do know is when I, cause I rewatched the show today cause before I made my video, cause I really wanted to get a good grasp without reacting to it, without me worrying about my kids bugging me and having to deal with that in the middle of the stream. What are my real thoughts on this? And I came to the conclusion that the show itself is trying to appease the whole of gaming. while also for some reason, dragon in Hollywood. And I'm all with you. They can just forget Hollywood. I think that has to do with trying to get mainstream acceptance. I don't know if Jeff Keighley's realized this yet. Gaming's more mainstream than Hollywood. And I know it feels weird, like The Rock and all these other... They're big people. They're big actors. Chris Pratt, Spoon, Mario. Fine. If you're going to have the Mario trailer... Like, okay, it made sense to have Jim Carrey say a thing. It made sense yeah. because 
Sonic's there and they're doing the Sonic movie and I was fine with the Sonic movie being there. No problem with that. Halo oh, Infinite. I mean, or, that's hey, based on the video game. Yeah, the Halo TV Same series. Halo, yeah. No, no problem. Like I actually thought there was going to be more of them. I thought we were going to see like Last of Us, another trailer for that movie or something. Like I actually was surprised there wasn't more of those movie ones. But cool, I was fine with that. My 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 thing is in watching it all. I realized looking through all the game lists because I, I was actually curious, like how much of the game list that was shown is people just not really knowing what these games are versus the games not actually being good. Um, because, I mean, I went through rewatching them, and the problem is there were a lot of CGI trailers, which is really hard to judge games on. But like the ones that did have gameplay, almost every single one of them looked really good. Even if it wasn't something I was interested in, I get the appeal, and I get the kind of audience that it's shooting for. And between that, between the awards themselves, which to me, whether or not gamers care about the, the, the awards, which... Gamers never cared about any of the other award shows, so I don't know why they care more about these ones. The awards are for the developers, and everybody knows this. This is the way it should be. This is even if the developers aren't mentioned on stage, it goes on their resume, gets them jobs. So it's really important to them and important to the studios, even if it's rushed through. It sucks, but it still matters. So that's what the awards are for. The awards are for the industry that makes the games. The showings are for the fans. But the problem is the fans that he's trying to talk to now, he's, he's got this worldwide audience. Like he did that, God, what was that? That Doka dancing yes. anime the thing. A pop thing. Yeah. Like that was not for us. Five minutes of that, by the way. Yeah. That, but wasn't for us. And I kept thinking, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't enjoy that part of the show. But then I started realizing, I, I started doing some research. Okay. Crap like that's really popular in China. And China has over 20 million people watching the Game Awards, according to the official stats from last year. Now, I don't know what the stats were for this year yet, but I'm like, okay, well, China probably wasn't interested in 99% of these Western games that were shown. But they probably really enjoyed that stupid dance thing that I thought was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in Game Awards history. And it made me realize that he's trying to cater to everyone. And the problem when you're trying to cater to everyone is you end up not really catering to anyone specifically. Right. And I think that's why people get bored with the show. But I also think that's what makes the event different. Unlike all the other events that cater to each audience, even E3 has individual events that cater to each audience. This is one event that caters to everybody, which doesn't really end up catering to anybody besides the developers that obviously get happy with winning awards. So my takeaway was it's just a Jeff Keighley event. This is what he does. He tries to smash as much in as he can. Honestly, looking back through all the trailers, honestly, they all kind of look pretty good. I, I can't pick out any game on that list that I can uh, like definitively look at and go, yeah, that's a bad game. Well, that's I mean, a bad game. Uh, well, I mean, that's that's a subjective thing, but I know well, it's subjective, you- but all the a lot of complaints I see are that the big names weren't there. But like we had a brand new Star Wars game announced. But like that's a big deal. It. No, granted, it was what, CGI. What, what it was CGI, of, what right? What kind of right? game is it? What well, the thing game, is, what we assume it was like? CGI. We have no idea. No, but I mean, is it an action game? Is it an RTS? Yeah, game? Yeah, I know, a, I know, I know. That was the problem. Game? That's that's the that, problem that's with a, a problem. lot of these things. I would rather have because you said there was the forty some odd games that are eighteen that um, we got a first glimpse of. I don't care about quantity. I care about quality. You know, if you could take away some of the show length by getting rid of these Wonder Woman announcements that tell me absolutely nothing, even the Star Wars announcement, it told you absolutely nothing about what this game is going to be. And when you look at the pedigree of the company behind it with games like Detroit Become Human, that doesn't answer any sort of question for you. So I would rather see a less quantity with a better quality of the games, a better quality of the of the trailer itself, you know, less CGI actual looks at the game. And if the game isn't ready to be shown, what's the point of talking about it? If we're at such an early state of development where we can't even show any sort of gameplay whatsoever, why are we even bringing it up? What's the discussion point around here? You know, especially on a stage like this and the whole appealing to everyone thing, like, I, I see I, that's the one thing I don't like. I don't think we need it needs to appeal to everyone because the thing about video games is you're you're going to find something that interests you. But if like you said, if you watch 99 percent of that show and you hated it and then you like the little dancing thing, 
you still wasted. I mean, that was five minutes of, of nearly four hours. So you still wasted the rest of your time. You're better off watching the highlights. I, I think some of the problems inherently come from Jeff going, this game's going to blow your mind. We've been working on this trailer for 74 years. This game is going, this is going to be the he, biggest he is, show he ever. He is an overhyped kind of person and and you have to do that to make yeah, it's, people it's a interested yeah. to, to some degree but at some time you also have to keep it real because you can only fool people so many times before they start to snap back at you yeah and, what, what do you say four elden ring level things i i, I didn't count for to be honest but it also was, depends but i also go what, what did he mean tracker. by that what did, what did he actually mean by four elden ring like like elden ring wasn't announced at the game awards it was first gameplay Right. And then at this, we got a, a trailer for the story, which showed absolutely no gameplay. But once again, that's a game that's coming out in February. Like, well, they they had a beta for it, though. So people have actually played it. All right. What I'm saying is at the Game Awards, we were presented with. Yeah. Just the, a, the cinematic. News, a cinematic story trailer. That's an and industry wide like, issue in every event, though. Did I, it, but, well, besides I mean, uh, to credit to Nintendo, they usually don't do it. Although technically twice in a row for Breath of the Wild 2. Maybe gameplay. I don't know. Was it canned? Because 2014's Breath of the Wild that gameplay was just a canned thing. So it, I, I find it interesting because you brought you brought up that but point. It, yeah, but no, at least on. it's in game. Yeah, it's in it, game. In, like, that's in, why in, I was in game. Yeah. I, I was fine with Hellblade because I understood that you know yeah, it's not that's how actual game gameplay, but that's the in game engine. That's what it's going to look like. So I don't mind yeah. in game. And Hellblade, stuff like you played that. the first Hellblade, right? Yes. Yeah, so it worked very much like that too. It was like a, a transition, seamless the gameplay. Right. That, so it's a little hard to get upset at, at the developers for that because that's sort of how the game works. Um, but the industry has a larger, I think, larger problem with the CGI trailer disconnect between that and gamers. I think a lot of gamers prefer gameplay, obviously, over anything. Or if you're going to have CGI, fine, do the CGI lead in to, to gameplay. Um, and that's not really a game awards issue. That's just an industry issue. E three is chock full of this stuff. State of plays are chock full of this stuff. Um, Xbox's shows are, are chock full of this stuff. It, it, it's it, I don't know why they keep doing it. The only thing I can think of is every game that seems to get these CGI trailers, a lot of them end up selling really well. So there must be something to the way that these companies have figured out because all the companies are basically doing it. That this version of marketing that, well, we might complain about it, maybe in the more general consumers out there, like the Star Wars Eclipse thing, it's got four plus million views on the official Star Wars channel, which is more than the subscribers they have. I know I can't tell the dislikes because there's dislikes are just right. <laughs> <So> <laughs> so that's, that's, so, that's uh, that sucks thing. with YouTube now. But I mean, it still has, you know, 172,000 likes. And, and I sat there and I go, you know, for the general consumers, I think they kind of like the CGI thing. Even if I don't, so I think. Do you somebody, think that? Do you think if they showed off? I, okay, I, I, I see what you're saying. With yeah, that, yeah, it's not but for I, us. We want gameplay, but like, I don't know. If the general the, consumer cares. But in the same breath, do you think that if they actually did gameplay of the game, do you think it would have gotten the same amount of views, or still? Had I, been I popular? think so. I, I would assume so. I would um, say yes, but there's a caveat because it depends, which c brings everything full circle on what type of game it is. If yeah. it's a Star Wars action game, sort of like um, Jedi Fallen Order, okay, you're going to get people's attention. If it looks like Command and Conquer, mm -hmm. you're not going to get as many people's attention yeah. with that game. All the and that's the and that's the problem with these things. And yes, it, it is rampant in the industry, but you know, I still think speaking up about it helps because people don't want this the general the general video game population doesn't want this and yeah you're gonna try to appeal to everyone you want that cat that coveted casual market but that casual market's gonna do whatever they want to do they're not gonna do things based on trailers in my opinion animal crossing didn't sell over 30 million copies because of a trailer of the game it sold over 30 million copies because people were talking about it people bought it people played it people shared it with their non-gaming family and that's what made it popular so you know in that sort of respect it is an interesting litmus test but i would like to see a company like try it both ways and see which is better in the public eye because you know you could do focus group and i know this is kind of off topic but like the whole That's thing okay. about focus groups is it drives me nuts because <laughs> if if everything 
was contingent on focus groups, every single product that was ever made would be the most popular product and sell phenomenally. Because in focus groups, you always think you have it figured out. You think you have the product. You think you have it the way you want it. And then if it goes to market and it flunks, it's like, well, what, what do we do with these focus groups? What was the point of that? Yeah, so, point, yeah. you know, that, that's just, that's just my opinion. I think, like I said, the game awards isn't a terrible show. I just want to see it more concise. I want it to be quicker. And like you said, gamers in general don't necessarily care about the other award shows but that's because the other award shows don't promote themselves like the game awards does the game awards goes out there and says this is the award show this is the show you need to watch this is the big to do and then to not do things that the other shows do yeah the the other shows don't have the big reveals and things like that but i feel like there's a better balance that can be found sure and I want to be clear because there, there were a couple people. Uh, I mean, there's always negative comments in every video, but there's a couple people that were like, you know, Nate, you're saying that you know no one can be critical, and I said, no, 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 be critical. I was watching the show and I was critical while watching it live on live stream. Um, it's not perfect. It, it has a long ways to go, and I don't know if it'll ever get there because a lot of the complaints are the same complaints for seven straight years, mm-hmm. um, rushing through awards, um, not, not always given enough time, like I, I, the. You know, like we just had um, uh, Tim from Kind of Funny Games on. And he brought up Greg Miller's speech back in 2015, and it's like I don't remember the last time there was a speech like that. Right, that was back in 2015. Like we haven't had those kind of moments. Like I guess the closest we had was Jeff Keighley speaking, uh, you know, speaking out at the very beginning of this show, but then wasn't willing to actually name the company, which upset some people. I don't know. I think he's just trying to play both ends of the stick on that one. I can't blame him. He's not trying to burn any bridges. It's a business. Um, it's a business. Yeah, he, and, that, yeah. and I'll always say this, that website that ran the whole, cause he actually talked about that on the spaces. Um, Good. And that was I, actually I what I, I started. There. So busy. Today. Uh, that's uh, there's a there's a recap on uh you could go to his uh twitter account list it's like an hour long i hop in sure. around the 20 minute mark i think um but that was the first thing i said to him because he actually had brought up how he had given the interview and then a, a propaganda became out of it by a by a tabloid like gaming website and i was like oh i like that mm-hmm. so when i got on there i was like i was like you know what they did you dirty like they they took you out of context and it's it ironic that that website which we won't name that website <laughs> will still i guarantee you they're gonna have activision reviews they're gonna have blizzard reviews they're gonna have reviews from riot games they're gonna have reviews from ubisoft but they just feel high and mighty and they could just pick you know, I, I can't stand mindsets like that but that was how what i started out with because he was like I saw you made a video. It was in my feed, but I haven't watched it. Yet. I was like, yeah, probably might want to skip that one, Jeffrey. Might want to skip that one. But you know, he, he's he's a good enough dude. I think today showed you know he's willing to talk to whoever, even detractors. I mean, yep. we, we we've gone back and forth on Twitter before, like over the Sting thing. Oh. Like, and you know, I just like to I just like to do it in jest. I think he understands that it's not real hatred. Yeah, I there, just there would like a to bunch see of those. Um, quoted tweets from him over the last 24 hours. Yeah. He was just responding to a bunch of haters and it was hilarious. But the girl, the girl who said, uh, <laughs> uh, when I die, I want Jeff Keely to be at my funeral so he yep. can lower me down one more yep. time or something <laughs> like that was awesome. That, that was and, badass that he responded to that one. Yeah. And you have to have a sense of humor. I don't think anyone, you know, is the whole thing of it is is that people can disagree on something and they can see things differently but they can still be you know amicable with people the social media has created this thing where it's like if two people disagree with on something it has to be a beef there has to be an argument like every week yeah. i'm in a new beef with somebody on the spawn cast oh, yeah. and it's like Apparently i was an asshole today because i called you and dreamcast guy out for a second i wasn't calling you out i was just saying i want to talk that, yeah, that, like when we fine. and we all understand that, but like the public's like, oh no, you're an asshole. Man. I'm like, yeah. It's, well, they like you know people like drama and people like to drum up stuff. I get yeah. it, but to bring it back to the game awards, my whole thing is it just needs it, it needs a better balance. There have been years where I've actually enjoyed the show, but what, I think what, this what, year, what year did you enjoy it? I'm just curious. Oh God, you're putting me on the spot now. There's only um, seven of them. Yeah, but unless I you want to go back to the Spike memory. TV days, but let's just no, forget, well, let's forget those no. even existed. And I don't even know why G4 TV is back anymore. But anyways, um, uh, that'll probably I did watch one episode of Attack of the Show since it came back. It was all right. 
I, see, I don't have the nostalgia for that. And yeah. when that sh- when 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 G four was on like whatever channel it was on, I knew it existed, but I was doing like other things other in thing. life. Well, and a lot of people were. It was a very yeah. small crowd that was wa- watching G four back then. So you know, it's like the attack people. of the show. The reason I know about it because it, it actually wasn't a G four show originally. It was a tech TV show before G four okay. bought tech TV. Um, and I was a big <laughs> PC hardware person, so that's why I know that show very well. X play, I don't really care that much about, but. I would say, I guess it would be 2017, the one that had, because they did Breath of the Wild there, and then they the, the DLC, and then they did the Bayonetta stuff there. Yeah, and it felt like it felt like a big show. You know, it felt like it, part of the problem. I feel like is that the companies themselves are caring less and less about it. The actual gaming companies, and it's more becoming influenced by things like hollywood influenced by things like the mobile gaming industry which is fine you know it is a part of gaming but yeah yeah, it's huge but if you want to do stuff like that have your own have your own mobile show because evidently mobile gaming is so big you would think that a million billion trillion people would watch that right no because it's a different it's a different market the mobile they don't care they care they want to see what's on their phone so i I used to think like that too. And then so when you think esports, what games do you think of? I don't. Okay. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I okay. that's Well, a lot of people say like League of Legends and, and 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 stuff like that. They're I was, well was going to say like Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> like that's Street true. Fighter yeah, yeah, the, the fight the fighting games and stuff like that as well, right? You know, those are a big thing and now we're getting a Smash League or whatever officially. That's kind of cool. We'll see whatever happens with that. But all the melee nerds. One of the biggest esports, <laughs> like this was just like three years ago. One of the most watched esports in the world was Candy Crush. In America or worldwide? In America. It was televised. I can't forget what channel it was. And it was averaging numbers that NFL playoffs average. It was it was mm. insane. Um, and nobody really knew what to do with that. They didn't know how to handle like the, the TV companies, like, they, we didn't expect this. I don't know where the viewers came from. Maybe they're all pirated streams in other countries. I have no clue. I just know when they posted the numbers, it was like, okay, well, you know, that's a whole part of the industry that I don't pay attention to. I don't anybody pay, like, how big, it, like, I know there's a lot of people that play phone games, but how serious? That's a, that's a billion. That's an that's a esports a, league built on a candy? Oh. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I was not aware of that. Yeah, so... One thing I've always said about the Game Awards, just to, to give like my criticism of it is, yeah, it's long. I always expect it to be. It's always three to three and a half hours. That's just what it is every year. I know that. It's been that way for seven years. Well, one year it actually went four and a half. That was... I don't like to talk about that year. Um, but you mentioned something interesting. That your favorite year was 2017, and you feel like the companies are carrying less and less. I don't know that it's... I, maybe this is where I, I come from in that I'm a lot more fair over the last two game awards because you remember what was probably the last big game awards probably like 2019 when we got the xbox series x unveiled yeah. at the game awards like that was that was a big deal that was a big get you got a brand new generation system announced a year early at your show that's pretty cool you show off one next gen game um and there were some some other games there as well nintendo even had some stuff there uh but since then we had a pandemic Lots of games right. have been delayed. Pushed. Right. Like, oh, Horizon's the game they showed. Well, I mean, Horizon was supposed to come out this year. Probably went to... I mean, like, like as an example, I've heard, I've seen a number of people bring up, well, Sony only brought Horizon, so Forspoken wasn't a thing that was shown, like, again? I know. It's again. It's a lot of games getting shown again, and I think it's because everything just keeps getting delayed, and we're kind of in this all virtual last year new consoles launching like what can you really show when new consoles are launching and they don't have games ready yet you know because everything's being pushed and then this year yeah we know about a lot of games coming next year supposedly it's kind of right, like but, but do it's we not know? like you have to give a, a release date hellblade 2 didn't hellblade 2 is probably hellblade 2 and sonic uh frontiers were probably the two most interesting things for me sure. hellblade 2 didn't have any sort of date yeah. Sonic Frontiers at Holiday 2022. Well, it's not like you have to put a Well, I, I bring this up because as an example, Nintendo has been very close to the vest and not showing things until we're actually going to think about releasing this damn thing. Um, which is why we've seen Splatoon 3 twice now. Obviously, we presume 
hope that Breath of the Wild 2 actually lands next year. History is all the games. It's always delayed, so we'll see what happens. But I, I, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, watching E3 and watching Summer Game Fest and going back to last year when there was no E3 and there was a couple events here and there, no Nintendo Directs, they made me realize that I just think companies aren't comfortable showing anything of substance at this moment because they're not back to normal. Um, like a lot of Japanese studios are all still working at home. Like they're still on lockdown in Japan in a lot of areas. Um, and that's obviously affecting, you know, games. There, there, I mean, there was people that were at the game awards that weren't actually at the game awards because of travel restrictions. That's why they did some of those video segments because they couldn't get there because of restrictions. So we're very much living in this world where, well, if the last decent, good, quote unquote good game awards was 2019, well, look at what, what's happened to the world since then. I don't I really know what to expect because nobody's been putting on good shows since the pandemic started, at least in my opinion. I know, yeah, some Nintendo Directs have been solid, obviously. You know, getting Splatoon 3 announced, obviously Metroid Dread, uh, or E3, but that's because Nintendo seems to have found a way to get back into the swing of things a little bit, at least it seems. We'll see. 2022 is going to be telling if they can actually get all these games out that they're promising. And that's just what we know right now. But I look at it as maybe I'm just more forgiving because I, I looked at that game list and I looked at those trailers and like, you know, like we had the Suicide Squad and we saw some actual gameplay and I thought it actually looked kind of good. I actually mentioned that game, even though it didn't interest yep. me. I was like, that was one of the better trailers at this event. But yeah, I it, it showed gameplay and it's like it, it, the gameplay didn't look bad, even if it's not something you're into, you know? Like, I get what you're saying, and I, I do understand, you know, the world is in, definitely in a different place than it was in 2019, but I have a solution. I have a solution on how you can make the show more interesting, even in lieu of a lot of companies uh, not being able to have things there or have things ready to show. You make the damn thing shorter. I don't need three and a half hours of that. If you so, would have made an hour and a half, two hours tops. So mwah, it's funny. My, my, my solution to, is actually to make it longer, but to not have it be one day. So as an example, esports is huge. You don't know much about it, but esports has millions and millions and millions of people that watch, commentate, play. It's a really, really big arena that is not covered properly by the Game Awards. It has a bunch of awards for it, and that's pretty much it. You don't really hear anything else about the esports there. Esports should have its own night. It's big enough to have its own night. It should have like a two-hour event, its own night, and you know what, Jeff Keighley? Go ahead and steal this idea. Have esports be its own night and actually do some live esports tournaments right there that are just small segments, like little quick matches for like 15 minutes. You know, oh, League won the best worlds thing. Do bring in the two top teams from that world thing and have them rematch each other right there on stage. You know how big that would be for esports? That would make esports more personal. And then you have to have obviously all the people there on stage to accept esports awards, hopefully, or through video if travel restrictions and stuff they can't get in. That's the right. esports section. The rest, obviously, if you eliminate the esports part of it, that obviously gives more time for all the other awards to potentially get more airtime. Like, it does feel weird, because one thing I do think Jeff Keighley is, I don't know, see, I don't want to say he's out of touch with it, because I, I think he's actually more aware than people give him credit for. Every time he's in an open conversation on podcasts, talking to people like you, it's very clear he's a, very much aware. Yes, I'll definitely, I'll definitely give him that. Yeah, for yeah sure. I, I think there's a perception out there that Jeff Keighley doesn't know what he's doing. He's very aware of all the criticism. He's very aware that people want like some categories that gamers consider a big deal that are rushed through. He's aware that gamers consider it a big deal. Um, and I think sometimes, and I don't know that this is the case and it's something that I would love to ask him if I get the opportunity is when there's a big category and I probably would have picked one from this year and asked him directly is the reason that this big category that gamers rush through and that we care about because you couldn't get them to come in and accept the award. Because you have to mail it to them. Because if you would have did this big thing and you want them to come on stage or you want them to do a video presentation and they just didn't do it, it might be a big deal to us and they won the award, but you can't do anything with it. There's no presentation you can do with it. You could do like Jim Carrey did though and send in a pre recorded well, response. Again, but this, you know. this is, and they've done that in the past actually. But I'm saying in the All case right. that the studio isn't sending you a recording and won't be there, it's like, 
that kind of sucks because maybe if one of the other games won, they would have, but you don't want to bias the whole thing towards, you know, having to determine if the person's going to be there or not or be able to do a video. And now that, again, that's a question I can't answer. That's something that I'm very curious because he's made it, he said in the, in the past that he's aware that there's some categories they've rushed through that he knows gamers think are a really big deal. Best fighting game, as an example. Yeah, he talked about that today. But like, you know, I'm wondering what the reason is that he rushes through those awards and doesn't seemingly have anyone there to accept them. Because like, honestly, I'm, I, this is just me. I, I'm very curious for the um, action adventure award that Metroid won. Like, if Nintendo wasn't there, that wouldn't have been an onstage event. Um... I don't know. I mean, Nintendo, because, you would presume all the nominees for the Game of the Year awards are going to be there, but I'm saying, like, say it wasn't nominated for that and it was only in that one category, and Nintendo sent zero representatives and said, you know I what, we're just dipping out I this think, year. I think there's a heads up. I don't well, think there, there's, there's definitely a heads up, because they're all prepared with stuff, so they know right. already ahead of time if they won. You know? Yeah, so like, There I was mean, an ongoing know. joke throughout the whole show, because um, Jeff Keighley even said, like, we're not letting Joseph Ferris on mic this year. And it's like... Right. It's like, okay, well, he's clearly, you're not, you're not serious. And I kept, then as I got to Game of the Year, I was like, no way. I kept thinking in the back of my mind, is this is where he's going to get on mic because he won Game of the Year. Um, and it's, it's really interesting, too, because I, I almost wish that he would talk more to Joseph Harris about the show. Because clearly he keeps saying, F the Oscars, F the Oscars. He hates the Oscars. He thinks the Game Awards are better. Fine. The Oscars wouldn't recognize him, so I can't blame him. He's got kind of a, he's, he's kind of a, jaded against the Oscars, but also all these other award shows that give a lot of time to the awards are losing viewership. So right. I don't, so I have a lot of ideas on how I would run an award show. I don't know that I have the capability to pull it off, but Jeff Keighley maybe, <laughs> maybe has the, the capability to pull it off. I just think that I, I, I try to look at the game award show as since it's trying to be this all encompassing thing. I'm trying to be, mindful that I've seen a lot of people excited for each individual announcement. Like if you go to the individual trailer uploads on uh, YouTube, you'll see a bunch of people really excited in the comments for the, each one of these games. So I sit there and I go, are, are we being like, just for the game announcement part alone, pacing and all that, I think everyone agrees we could fix that. We can reorganize that. We can, I don't know, maybe chop down on the number of games, put more rewards on the stage. I don't know, whatever. I think that's a general criticism every year. But a lot of people are, that I see on the internet are disappointed because the things they wanted to see weren't there. And then the things that were there, they didn't care about. But a lot of people did care about some of these things. The audience isn't growing every year because people don't care. So I feel like some of the disappointment that a lot of gamers feel every year is because we're inherently selfish people and we only care about what we're interested in. And if I mean, what we're yeah. in isn't there, it's a bad show. And I'm kind of like on the opposite end of that where I go, I already know like 12 to 15 games I'm buying next year. I, I, I don't need the Game Awards to convince me to buy more games. I'm already like, my pocketbook's already going to be running thin and my time's going to be running thin. And that's before we even get to 2022. So I look at it as, well, when I'm reading these comments. I'm going, well, these people are, are excited about this. Like, this is a, this is a good thing. Yeah, okay, I want that Star Wars trailer to have gameplay, but look at all these Star Wars fans that are super hyped. Hopefully they don't get let down. Please don't let them down. We don't know what they're hyped about because I don't know what game they're getting. Like, I'm really confused on what they're... But I think they're just hyped because it's a non-EA Star Wars game coming out. I get it. That's probably why they're hyped. We already knew it existed. We just haven't seen it. So we still technically haven't seen it. But... I, I think I'm trying to be mindful of I can be happy that other people are happy. And I feel like maybe that's why I'm not that critical of it. Because I go, look at all these people that are happy. Look at all the people that are angry. Well, all the angry people are saying the same thing. All the happy people are just going, man, I'm really excited for this. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fair. Yeah. But I, I can only really speak for, yourself. for myself and yeah. my enjoyment. And so, and you know... I, yeah, no shade of you, by the way. Already, no. Oh, no, no, no. But... But I, I mean, I, I understand that mindset. And like I said, there are, there are people who genuinely enjoy the show, but I feel like the the core or what should be, I should say, the core audience, the people who are spending hundreds to thousands of dollars a year on video games and, you know, 
making this industry grow and propelling this industry to new levels. I don't think they should be forgotten about either. And it seems like every year it strays a little bit more away from us and a little bit more towards someone else who may or may not exist. But it's what the suits think. It's it, and that that's a whole other. Sure, that, you know, that's the, a whole different debate. The pomp, the circumstance of the show, and it's like it's video games. Like, do we need this whole? But that, like I said, that's a whole big thing. Yeah. But the, you know, at the end of the day, I don't hate Jeff. I don't oh, hate no. the show. I would just love to see the show try at least, at least give me one year where you try something that a lot of people that are vocal about it would like to see if it flops uh, it's not gonna hurt your pocketbook jeffrey i know i know how much you you're making <laughs> off of this stuff you'll you'll be just yeah. fine yeah, he's, he's doing good but uh you know i would just like to see you know try it you can even I guess you couldn't really try it because of the award aspect of it, but you know, just, just try something different. And you know, at the end of the day, it's his call. It's his money. It's his business. It's his LLC. It's his property. He can do whatever the hell he wants with it. All we can do is, is just share ideas and share areas of criticism. And I think he does listen to it to some extent. I mean, he listens to what I have to say and I'm just a random idiot on the internet. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you're a Knicks fan, so that, that, that says how much we should pay attention. No, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just a depressed Knicks fan <laughs> for my but entire no, yeah, no, life. I, I, I totally, I totally get, get where you're coming from. I, look, the game awards are, are what they are. I, I think it, because it's been seven years of this, I, I've reached a point that I just know what the show is every year. It, I, I, I'm critical of those, some things, but I get it. And I always go, if people want things a certain way, well, Jeff wanted things a certain way, so he did his own show. Right. Someone else needs to step up then and create a new, like, you know, E3 was bombing out, so well, Jeff Keighley stepped up and, and started making the Summer Game Fest, and some people like that, some people don't. Well, if we want something different that's not ran by Jeff and not ran by the usual, then somebody else has to do it, and I don't know anyone else in the industry that's really willing to put that kind of risk because it was a risk when he originally did. It's not a risk anymore, but it was a risk year one, um, and I don't know anyone else that's willing to do that. Like, a, lo- a lot of YouTubers, I'm always like, well, why don't YouTubers all get together and throw a big event? Well, because they don't we're have all busy. Holly. We don't, they don't have time. They, they don't, don't have, have the, the money. Hollywood. We don't have the backing. Yeah, the, that you know? LA money. The LA money is very. The LA money is pretty money. insane. I, I can't live in LA, guys. I will tell you right now. If I was LA YouTuber, I wouldn't be on YouTube. Um, <laughs> neither would I. I would, just, I would never uh, move to LA. Not, it's, so. not, it's not a very smart business decision unless uh, you're very fortunate. Um, but I'm I not. I live in Wisconsin, so cheap living. East coast, beast coast. <laughs> Uh, anyways, well, thank you so much for, for coming on, man. I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know it's been uh, probably a little bit longer. I wasn't even looking at the time. But, nah, um, that's cool. It's whatever, man. All right, cool. Well, you guys should go check out RGG's channel. I'll have his uh, channel uh, with a sub link, a direct sub link down in the description uh, as well. As, yeah, I, like, I like to be nice to anyone who comes on, on, on here. <laughs> so go, go check him out. By the way, a lot of people always think like I'm RGT Jr., I think it's because really? I, because remember remember I used to be sh- clean shaved and now I have it grown out so now that oh yeah. no we look too similar oh. oh we were the we both wear flat bill sports hats yeah. sometimes oh this isn't a sports one but I guess there's only like one certain style of person allowed per yeah. thing on the internet yeah, apparently apparently anyways man well thanks for coming on hopefully we can get you on uh, one of our longer podcast segment shows someday um, otherwise I think this is the first time I've spoken to you since like Spawn Wave ages ago outside yeah, of when been you popped my live streams. <laughs> it's been a minute for sure it's been a, it's it, it's been a hot minute well i'll i'll let you uh go man um just one last thing i want to mention that that twitter video you put up of you dancing in your little arcade room mm-hmm. i kind of felt like you were just trying to one-up me i actually have uh, there's one dating website that i use for dating that they allow you to upload a video <laughs> and i put that on there because <laughs> how'd that go for you there. You know, a lot of a lot of people like it. They're like, "Oh, you're funny, you're confident." You're, yeah, you're confident. Yeah, I, don't, stuff, I, don't, I don't care. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're my YouTuber. I don't really care what the hell comes up on the internet about me. I, yeah, like <laughs> you get you get thick skin after a while doing this. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, you uh, have a good night, man. All right, Broski. You too.